We're taking a ride through a residential area in Grafton, Wisconsin. It's a few miles north of Milwaukee, right off of I-43. This nice yellow house you're looking at fits right in, but it's different. Inside is where artist Jeff Dallas has his studio, where his paintings take life. We'll get a behind the scenes look at this impressive collection. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Ned. Thanks for letting us in. Uh, we are always glad to get behind the scenes to see what goes on before the art show. And uh, it's just a pleasure to be with you today. Well, welcome, welcome, come on in. Yeah, uh, painters fascinate me. Uh, my wife, Debbie, loves the painter Van Gogh, the great uh, painter. Uh, but we always talk about where does this come from? And I, I guess the first thing I want to ask you is, is what inspires you to paint? You know, Ned, I think for me, it really comes from growing up um, in a small town, being uh, close to nature. Um, this is back in the 70s when um, kids were kind of free to roam around a little bit more. And um, I also had a father who's uh, very into hunting and fishing. So I got to spend a lot of time in the outdoors. And I think often when my dad was more into the fishing and hunting part of it, I was more into the beauty of the scenery and just really appreciating um, how powerful and like moving nature can be in its different moods. So I guess I always felt like I wanted to capture that feeling and really communicate it um, to other people in, in a really um, personal way and share that experience with someone else. Well, that intrigues me because while some painters might be very realistic in their, in their interpretation of, of, of nature, uh, your paintings seem to evoke a kind of emotion so it's a feeling more than an exact representation. Yeah, I would, I would say you're definitely right. And I guess that's really what I want to communicate is um, that deep connection that we all have to nature at some level and um, share it with people. So how long does this take for you to do? What's, what's the process? that you go through in creating one of your pieces? Um, so it typically starts off um, with a hike. Now, maybe I've heard about a beautiful place from someone else, or I've seen a picture of it. Um, but typically, you know, I'll uh, pack my paints up in my backpack with my um, portable easel and a canvas. And um, I'll hike out to a beautiful place. And um, I really, while I'm hiking out, I'm checking out all the different beautiful, beautiful views of a place that I could make a painting from. And even though I'm typically headed out to make the most spectacular, dramatic view of a place, that's sort of the most iconic view. Uh, along the way on that hike, I often see four or five beautiful views that I could paint. And um, initially this sort of was difficult for me because I felt like there was no way I was going to be able to paint all these places. But um, in the, probably the last five or 10 years, I've been working with a technique that's more like a cubist technique um, where I incorporate the different views of a place into one image to try to capture the whole of a place. I know that a, a lot of times an artist might work off of a, uh, a photograph, but I see that uh, you go out and you're, and you're sketching what you want to paint. That's right, Ned. Um, typically I go out and as I hike, I do take reference photos to use later in the studio. I want the first experience of the painting to be um, on site. 
um, to be able to really capture the essential nature and my first reaction. I mean, really, probably even more importantly, that first reaction is what I want to really capture and convey to other people. Because, I mean, when you first walk out to a beautiful view, um, that feeling is really special and amazing. And, you know, after you're there for a while, that feeling kind of subsides. But the initial rush of that feeling is what I'm after. The paints that you select, was this a process that evolved over the years? You know, tell us tell us a little bit about about that and the kind of paints that you use. Okay. Um, typically, I use acrylic paint, and I like acrylic because it dries pretty fast, like in about twenty minutes, and I can do multiple thin layers. Um, you know, I, I only have to wait twenty minutes for a layer to dry, whereas with oil, you have to wait. You know, like a uh, also, it's great in the field because when you paint something and you hike back through the brush, it's not going to smear off because it's already going to have it's it's already been dried essentially. Um, and um, so, as far as the colors I go, I use the the palette. I try to use a limited number of colors, and I try to mix these colors as much as I can as I go and not use colors straight out of the tube so that I'm ensuring I'm really um, using colors that for the most part I've perceived uh, myself. Has that evolved over the years or has your style remained fairly constant? My style has actually changed um, quite a bit. And initially my style was a little more like Van Gogh. It was kind of expressionistic and um, little bit more literal as far as the space in the painting goes. Mm -hmm. I've been using um, cubist ideals where I combine different viewpoints in, into one painting and that's been very interesting for me um, and that each painting becomes kind of a puzzle in a way because the, the angles and the viewpoints are different and when I combine them together I have um, lots of choices I can make that are purely artistic that I wouldn't necessarily have in a painting that I was just portraying from one point of view. What always fascinates me about artists is the, is the techniques and, and, and brush strokes and uh, how much paint and everything and, and uh, every, everybody's different. Right, yeah, it's um, it's interesting how some artists are really into like heavy texture and thick paint on their paintings. And I occasionally use that in some places to emphasize something. Um, but typically uh, my surfaces are relatively flat, but I do like to try to um, show the emotion, the feeling I'm having about a place through the through the brush strokes itself. Um, so it's, you know, and to that point, it's it's always kind of a balance between trying to convey as a particular thing, like this rock has a particular shape. Um, and if I use strokes that are a little too controlled, it, it uh, tends to have kind of a flat feeling, if not look. And when I approach that same rock with a looser hand and a more emotional feeling as I do it, um, I think it comes across in the brush stroke. Mm. But of course, um, it's a little bit, the, the balance between the controlled and the, the loose is, is a lot, is really the fun of it. I, I like the large canvas. Yeah, it uh, definitely gives you an opportunity to loosen up your arm and actually loosen up your paint strokes because, you know, of course, when you're working on a smaller canvas, um, you tend to make smaller uh, movements that you're pretty much doing with your hand. And when you're working on a larger canvas, you can get your whole arm and even your your shoulders and body into the movement. and. Uh, I think it comes across to the viewer 
and they feel it and they, and they can almost feel something in their body maybe when they when they see that here we are inside not going to art shows because of the pandemic and i'd like you to address that a little bit and, and your interaction with the people who appreciate and purchase your artwork well it's certainly been a big shift for us um Dallas, my wife, and myself, um, we make uh, almost all of our income from art fairs. So that means we're on the road, you know, um, a pretty good amount of the time, probably like about a quarter of the time. And so now uh, for the last couple of months, we've been really home. And in a way, that's been great for me because it just gives you a chance to ground down more into where in your life and even into the place you live. Um, it's been good because I've had more time to paint in a way. Um, but financially, of course, it's it's been a little bit dicey. I've been fortunate in that I've sold a number of paintings since the pandemic has started. So that's been um, terrific, really. Uh, people have been very supportive. Well, we certainly do look forward to seeing you on the art show circuit. Uh, uh, you know, you've been all over the country and, and you've got fans everywhere. So, uh, but it's nice to have a few minutes with you at home, taking some time. And we appreciate the behind the scenes look, Jeff. Thank you so much, Ned. It's been uh, great talking to you. And we thank you for watching. Join us again for another Thomas William Furniture virtual art fair behind the scenes.